we're going to be starting this video with a quick example, right? That's meant to sort of recap what we talked about in our previous video on the mean value theorem and introduce a little bit of what we're going to be talking about today, right? So we're going to start with this function here, f of x equals negative x squared plus 8x plus 4. And we want to find the values of c that, satis that um, satisfy the mean value theorem on this integral right? and the formulas there for your reference. So same process as last time. Um, we're going to start by asking those same two questions, right? So we want to start by asking, is f of x continuous on 0, 8? And then we want to ask, is f of x differentiable on 0, 8? Really important that we always ask those in the beginning. f of x in this case is a quadratic, which is a polynomial. Polynomials are continuous and differentiable everywhere. So in this case, um, we can just say yes. Beautiful. So now we can flow on with our next uh, step here, um, which is going to be to solve for the average rate of change. That, of course, being the right-hand side of this equation here. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to have um, f of b is going to be f of 8 minus f of a, which is going to be f of 0, over 8 minus 0. Uh, if we do this out, we'll get f of 8 is simply going to be uh, 64 minus, times a negative 1. Plus, once again, we'll have a 64 here. Um, so this, the negative 64 and the positive 64 cancel out. So we're just left with a plus 4. Okay. Minus, plug in 0. Uh, if we plug in 0, the x squared and the 8x both go to 0. Uh, we're just left with a positive 4 once again. Divide all that by 8. And what we're going to get is, since, the four, since 4 minus 4, we're just going to get 0. That's pretty interesting. Right? Because effectively what's happened is what we've seen here is that f of b minus f of a has effectively come out to zero. Right? And this is a pretty interesting thing, right? And that, that can only be true if f of a is equal to f of b. Uh, but that's just generally an interesting thing that, that comes out of this. Right? So let's just keep that in the back of our minds and uh, plow on. So once again, Next thing we want to do is we want to find where f prime of c equals that slope there. So we're going to find where f prime of c equals 0. Once again, that should strike you as super interesting, right? Because this is the same equation we use to define our critical points. Well, also undefined, but this is the main thing we use to define a critical point. So it's just a really interesting coincidence. So Anyways, let's go ahead and do it. So we'll have um, negative 2. So we'll have um, f prime of c equals negative 2c plus 8. And that guy is going to be equal to 0. You can push over the 2c to that side, divide by 2. And we'll just be left with c equals 4. Okay. So effectively, what we've done because of the fact that f of b minus f of a is equal to 0, that just happens to be a property of the two points we've chosen, we have basically been forced to find a, a critical point for our function here. Right? We've been pushed to find a critical point of our function here just by walking through the steps of the mean value theorem, which is pretty wild. And it's so interesting, we decided to make this its own theorem. And that's what Rawls' theorem is all about. All right, so Rawls' theorem I like to think of it as a special case of the mean value theorem because a lot of its conclusions stem from the mean value theorem. So it has the same preamble as with the mean value theorem. So f of x is continuous on the closed interval a comma b, differentiable in the open interval a comma b. Uh, so where it really starts to deviate is here. So we, we, we say that if the above is true and this other condition is true, that is f of b equals f of a, right? If this condition is met, then we have this point C, the same point C on the interval a comma b, such that 
the following is true f prime of c equals zero and you can kind of see how this naturally stems from the mean value theorem right because if you if we were given that f of b equals f of a and you plug that into the original slope formula with the mean value with, with the mean value theorem you will reach the same conclusion right so let's look at a quick visualization now to really tie this all home again all right so here's our visualization for this problem right so once again we have a and b which were given to us c is what we solved for and the slope of this purple line through C represents the instantaneous rate of change of f of x at C. And the slope of this blue line here represents the average rate of change from A to B. Okay. A couple of things I'd like to draw your attention to here. Firstly, I want you to notice that even though we're talking about Rawls theorem here as opposed to the mean value theorem, the mean value theorem's conclusions still hold up, right? So this line and that line are still very much parallel, right? And that means that these two lines have the same slope, which is exactly what the mean value theorem tells us. The only difference being, of course, that in Rawls theorem, we're considering only the very special case where the slope is equal to zero. But the mean value theorem still holds true because the mean value theorem is uh, a generalization of, or, or Rawls theorem is a very specific case of the mean value theorem. Okay? That's one thing I do want you to keep in mind. So if it makes you more comfortable to look at this through the lens of the mean value theorem, please, please do so. I encourage you to, because that way you can kind of see how this, this is still consistent in multiple perspectives. Okay? So that's one. The next thing I want you to notice is notice how this point C is sitting on top of a maximum. In fact, it is the absolute maximum of this function, but that's pretty interesting, right? Because if you, and however, it does make sense, right? Because the way we defined C here in, in the Raw, in Rawls theorem is we defined it as, as, being the solution to f prime of c is equal to zero, which is exactly how we define a critical point, right? So it only makes sense that we might have extreme values at these values of c when we're dealing with Rawls theorem, right? So that's also something you should really be on the lookout for, right? So, and this makes for a really fun test question as well. So just try to make sure you understand the connection between Rawls theorem, the point c, and extreme values. Right? So that's it for this video. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!